Hi, everybody. It's Bonnie Hunter in the basement at Quiltville. Happy Valentine's Day. I am hoping, fingers crossed, <laughs> that some of you will come in here and find me and we can have a fun time tonight. I have been longing for sewing machine time. In fact, when I got back from Japan, um, we were gone for 10 days and then I spent another 10 days with my dad and sister-in-law, all I could think about was the projects waiting for me at home. Do you ever get that way when life gets so busy that you just don't get a chance to put your creativity in motion and it starts making you feel a little bit grumpy? That's exactly where I've been. Oh, good. I see several of you coming in. This is wonderful. In fact, I'm going to move this light. This is my uh, slim line by daylight. I love it, but it shines right into the camera. So I'm just going to move it over that way just a little bit. It'll still give me plenty of light. Um, I've been longing, longing since Thanksgiving time to really have some time to create, to work on things without a deadline, to not already know what the project is and to be able to work through it, let the fabric speak to me, let the design speak to me, and just see what comes out of it. There's two different ways to work on a project. Either you know what it's gonna look like before you even start, you know the fabrics, you know the pattern, you've seen the sample, it's in a book or whatever it is, and so there's nothing really new to discover, or there's the way that I kind of like to go, which is where I start with pieces, maybe leftovers from another project. This was left from um, the border of my Idaho Square Dance quilt that's on the cover of Addicted to Scraps. I had leftover pieces of piano key border, way too many, way too many. And so I subcut them the other direction. So these were long strips and I subcut them this way. So now I've got four patches, four in a row, ready to join to each other to make some 16 patches. And I thought I would be all Valentine's-y and wear this sweater for quilt cam. Now I am just dying of heat. Where did my patches go? So this is where all of these have left me. And the, the worst part is, until I came downstairs night before last, I got back um, home from spending the weekend in Virginia on Tuesday and looked at the machine and here it was, it was like, oh yeah, I remember you. So you can forget projects in fairly short order. I know I can, but I've counted and I am only nine short of where I want to be. I have made all of these lovely little 16 patches out of the leftovers from the borders. When the borders ran short and there was not enough border left to continue making these, I pulled out strips. I pulled out short strip sets and hopefully we'll have just enough to do what I want to do with no leftovers or guess who's going to have to find something to do with the leftovers. But I just, I love these fabrics. These fabrics go all the way back to 1980 something, 1990 something, early 2000s and forward. There's even some, da -da 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 -da, some little Millennium Y2K in there. That's my little favorite navy text print. We were doing text prints when text prints weren't even cool. So funny story, while I was teaching in Phoenix, um, weekend before last, my friend Pat from Maryland showed up in Phoenix. I guess Phoenix is a much better place to run away to in January than, um, than Maryland is. <laughs> I, just when I thought I was going to be out of this navy print, guess what she brought me? More Millennium fabric. Long may it live. So short story long, I'm almost done with these. I need another nine or ten. I always like to do a couple um, extras just because I know as I'm putting them together that one or the other is going to be the wrong size or seams don't match or it doesn't fit right fabric wise where it's going it's too close to something else so if I have a few extra I'm okay one of the things that I thought was extra funny let's see if I can find well it's it's all pinned up do you see this blue one right here with the hearts and that little circle flower thing this one Guess what's being reprinted as a new fabric in 2019? You can't fool me. That's a 1980s print. But it's being reprinted. I saw it. So if you've still got some of this stuff in your stash, you can safely pull it out right now and just say that it's another colorway of that new thing that's coming out because we all know that what's old is, is new again. All right, I'm going to set this aside. 
Set it aside, set it aside. What else have I got going on? This happened over Thanksgiving. I don't even remember if I showed this to you, but I brought it home from the cabin because it was with some other quilt tops. Just to remind myself that yes, I have been able to squeeze in a little bit of sewing. I made a table topper out of these leftover triangle blocks and I only had to make an extra couple of blocks and use the leftover four patches from last year's leader ender project, our checkerboard rails. Those leftover four patches made the inner border and then the outer border I think is an old Virginia Robinson or Robertson. I don't know if you can see, there's a nice little floral print on there, kind of a scattered on this red orange or orange red. I love it. So this is what's going to be going down into the must quilt it someday stash. Makes me happy. Makes me happy. And then this one, you guys. How many of you are working on this? This was this year's Leader Ender Challenge. It's finally reached top status. The pieces are big on this one. So this one is a lot easier to get to completion. The year before we had those four patches that were made with one and a half inch square. So those took a little bit longer to make size wise, but this is jewel box stars. I've done it in a nice twin size. I'm not even gonna put a border on. I just wanna use a nice strong binding to give it um, an edge finish after quilting. And I'm thinking purple, I'm leaning towards purple. Um, it's likely to go on one of the beds at Quiltville Inn. Come a little closer so that you can see what kinds of funky fabrics are in here. And then there's another secret. Not really a secret, but just, just the way that I like to sew. If points don't match precisely, I don't tear out. If they are just a needle's width or a pin width apart, if they're close enough, then I live happily in the land of that'll do. Because picking out and sewing back together and pinning and picking out and sewing back together just frustrates me to no end. And it doesn't make me happy. So if, if antique wonky quilts are wonderful in their um, free form, what do they call it, organicness, <laughs> then guess what? I'm just jumping on the bandwagon for future vintage quilts. Somebody will say, well, bless her heart. She sure tried. And I only tried sort of. Okay, so that's Jewel Box Stars. I'll grab my chair before I sit down on the floor. Um, it was a fun one. If you haven't jumped in yet, you still have time. And you don't even need to do this one as a leader ender project. When my quilt is quilted and bound, I'm going to re-edit the directions in, in the free patterns tab. So I'll be able to say, I used this number of blocks, the quilt is this size, and, and this is how I finished it. And we'll be able to add to that. But until I get the quilting machine fixed, um, that's gonna have to wait just a little bit. We're looking a few months out on that. So now that I've rambled a whole lot, is this your first time at Quilt Cam? I want to especially welcome you. If you want to send me a photo that I can share, and you know how I love to see your photos. This got rolled over by my wheelie chair, can you tell? <laughs> I need to put this in like a page protector or in a frame or something like that. But this is the email address that you'll email me at. It's Quilt Cam Time, one word. You don't have to use capitals. They're just there to show you how to spell it out quiltcamtime at gmail.com. Please don't send stuff to my regular email address because it gets completely lost. It's, it's too hard to reply to. I'm all set to answer on Quilt Cam Time. So what you do is send me an email with a photo. I look at it, we talk about it, I share in your joy and your scrap happiness, and we share it with you, right, everybody else right here on Quilt Cam Live. So, um, Let's just do that. Let's just go right to the inbox. I heard some things coming in already. Annette Martin says, new to me, vintage sewing machines. I had a very vintage birthday Christmas and Christmas. I bought myself two machines and purchased a Singer 404 pictured below. When I took the 404 to have a tune-up, the sewing machine repairman said I had a Singer 30. Oh, this, sorry. Blah, blah, blah. The sewing machine repairman had a Singer 301 for sale. I couldn't leave it there for Christmas, so it came home with me. Happy birthday and Merry Christmas to me. Now to find that perfect cabinet. 
She also says she's working on scrap crystals that she started with us in Indianapolis in November. So she's busy on those. Oh, nice. Okay, so this is my opportunity to show you the, the difference. I've had several 404s come through my life. Um, we found one for my aunt in Minnesota as a perfect first vintage sewing machine. Do you see where the bobbin cover plate is? That bobbin slide plate slides toward you and it has a drop-in bobbin, so no bobbin case whatsoever, which also means this machine threads front to back. So if you're not used to needles that thread sideways, you might feel more comfortable with a 404. The truth of the matter is they're not that much different than a 301, but that drop-in bobbin holds about twice as much thread. It's also got a mechanism for dropping the feed dog, so you can use this machine easily to do um, free motion quilting because the, the feed dogs drop right on, on top of the machine bed, and it will easily fit into a cabinet. All right, then the 301 she's got here. They're both two-tone, so they look really similar. Oh, she's just got... Okay, so this wasn't a picture of a 301, but she did want to show you how she set up her seam guide on the machine bed. And what I do on my 404 is I actually have my seam guide in two pieces. So I can slide that slide plate forward without having to pull the seam guide off. I really love the edge that the credit card piece or gift card piece gives. What's extra nice is if you're doing stitch and flip quilting, you don't have to remove a magnet and get it out of the way. It doesn't have a very high profile, so it can usually just stay there and, and be worked around. So that's the needle area on a Singer 404. Watch for them. They were often used as school machines. It's just a basic straight stitch machine. It weighs about the same weight that a 301 does, um, which is about 14 pounds. It's gear driven. Um, the motors and the, the gears are the same as in a 301, and it's just kind of sitting on the back burner. It hasn't really been discovered by a lot of people yet. So if you're just looking into getting a good straight stitch vintage machine that you can haul to classes and things like that, shoot for a 404. You won't be sorry. All right. Here is her. Oh, that's lovely. That's perfect for Valentine's Day. So here's her scrap crystals block black and red and white all over perfect that uses the bonus triangle size so if you've got a whole bunch of bonus triangles that's a book you'll want to check out it's from more adventures with leaders and enders and it's on sale in the quiltville store all righty let's see who else we've got here teresa jarvis says Saying hello from snowy and cold Milton in Ontario, Canada. These winter days enable this quiltaholic scrapaholic. Perfect. So she's got her top of her good fortune quilt in her email right there, which is a perfect time for me to remind you that we've got our last Mystery Monday link up happening on the blog. It went live on Monday. Today's Thursday, so you'd need to scroll back about four days and check out what everybody has posted. There's some fabulous ones. Now, one thing that uh, we will maybe need to address for next year, they've changed their format. I'm still using the old format, but at some point, the old format is going to go away, and this is in links. This is the, the program that I use for giveaways and for um, link ups. You have to, because of the privacy issues, the whole that whole European thing, when you first go to do a link up on InLinks, it's going to ask you for an identity, either Facebook or Google, or you can register through your through your email address and you'd have to click this thing and verify this thing. And yeah, it takes a little bit of time. But unless people decide to do this, we won't have much of a, of a link up to do. Um, so we'll see what happens for next year's mystery. I will continue using the old format as long as I can, but as soon as it becomes not available anymore, I'm not sure what's gonna happen with our link ups. So please link up while you can. That one will go through, oh, I think it's tonight is, see it's Thursday night. I think it goes through tomorrow. Friday. I think we extended it an extra, extra day. So if you are wanting to post your progress on your good fortune quilt, you'll want to do that 
right away. All right, so I want to sew something. And all I'm doing, I went ahead and I sewed all of these strips of pairs. Or strips of pairs. <laughs> pairs of strips. Okay, they're kind of light, they're loosely light dark. They're just mostly contrast. Um, some of them are, are darker or lighter than others. I just wanted to be sure that I could see one fabric next to the other so that they they don't really look checkerboardy when I hold them up. So they're just they're just kind of you know randomy. But I wanted to make it easy to press. So on all of these, I pressed towards the darker ones so that I could nest seams. And I've just been sitting here watching the stupidest show. I have to find my foot pedal. Okay. We can talk about this. For the last year or so, I have been just really discouraged when I found something that I thought I would like to watch on Netflix. The preview sounded, you know, the little synopsis sounded good. It looked like it had one or two seasons, so you could really get into it. And then you click and you get all the way through the, the start music and whatever. And the voices come out in some other language with subtitles. And it would never say on there that this is Finnish with English subtitles or whatever it is. Now it seems the thing that they've done is they've taken these these shows from other languages. And, and I'm not saying anything about shows that don't have other, other languages. I think we need those. I think everybody's shows ought to have a chance. But they need to get better actors to do the overdubbing in the... English language because it's like watching an old Godzilla movie and the mouths move blah 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 and then the voice is still coming but the mouth's not moving anymore or the the mouth is is moving but there's no voice coming because in English the word is shorter so it's it's just in other words it's not a program to watch it's a program to listen to because you, you just can't you just can't watch it. You can't unsee that. It just pulls you right in and you're trying to figure out what they're saying. So the show I was watching, just in case you want to agree with me, it's called Morocco uh, Love in Times of War or something something like that. You'll find it. You'll find it on Netflix and, and give it a go. They couldn't have found more mismatched voices for these characters. And it's like the voices that are overdubbing are also overcompensating with the acting and the breathing and the, and the everything. And I know it's not an easy thing to do, but if you want a good giggle, check it out. Let me know what you think. It's, it's Godzilla, I tell you. It's Godzilla all over again. So in order not to have a, a chain super long, we've done this before. I am just doing two blocks at a time, using one as the leader for the other, and I am just making sure that I don't have duplicates right next to each other. So they're kind of loosely light, medium, dark, but however they tend to end up. And I suppose if I ended up with a duplicate, it would be okay, as long as they weren't touching. But it, it's, it's just really funny when you have characters that are supposed to be laughing in whatever language it is, and then now they're, they're overdubbing laughing in English, ha, 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 as if it's supposed to be really, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. But it's better than subtitles, because with subtitles, I can't stitch and, and listen and watch at the same time. So, all right. So let's just give this an iron press except the iron's off. Okay, so the plan is to sew up a bazillion of these. They're gonna be four inches finished, right? Because they're made with inch and a half strips. Four inches means that you're gonna need a lot, but I'm gonna clear out a lot. And I really, really like the, the different tones of blue together with no neutral, no neutral. It just looks just blue. And I have plans for an alternate block. And I may put it on point with sashing so that no seams have to match anywhere in here. So that's a win. I love things on point. I love things with sashing where seams don't have to match. Um, I'm loving pulling this all from my scrap user system so no fat quarters are harmed in the process. 
and I'm working on something that doesn't have a deadline, which actually feels more better. All right, so that's two. So it's just really easy. Just You just grab in here, and whoops, there's two with that same plaid, so I'm going to grab something else and just put them next together. Do they look okay? Yeah. So move the big scissors out of the way. Just sew one and snip the one off from behind. And that way you can you can build them fairly quickly. Whoops, that one only has three. Let's dig for something else. I did some new ones, so I had some new stuff to so I pick up the same one. Okay. You can get really picky on trying to choose the right thing when they're all good. And it can go on this side, or it could go on that side. I don't know if I like it this side better. But 16 patches are just so much fun. They always look good. And because these pieces are so small, that ugly fabric gets to go away and it's just a color. Okay. So just snip one at a time. I had been using smaller snips. I don't know why those are there. Because I'm not crossing seams, I can go ahead and add more strips and then press the whole block when I'm done. Just grab another one, sew it on. This way there's no long tangle of a big chain of piecing to haul off to the ironing board. I don't want this. I want just these. Okay. So here's another one. They're just just like potato chips. So all the strips that I sewed this afternoon, I sewed while listening to that crazy show and trying to match the voices to whoever the character was. And <laughs> it's okay. It was a day to play. I was home alone. It was a wonderful way to spend a Valentine's Day. Okay. So much fun. Okay. Let's check in with you and see what's going. That is just beautiful. I love that. Okay, Marjorie says, Marjorie Lapointe's L, L. Provence. She says, finally finished this top, my second mystery quilt, enclosed our pictures of both. Love the process. Thank you so much. And this makes me really happy, her on Provence. When I was driving home from Virginia the other day, the pink trees are blooming. And I know it's hard for those of you in northern climes who got um, covered with ice and snow this past week to imagine blooming pink trees. But the nice thing about living south is that I, I get to live through this twice. I get the blooming spring here, and about the time that it's gone, I go up to Michigan. And it'll be blooming there in May, so we, we get double spring. Um, I love it. I just love it. Oh, yay. So here is her, speaking of Michigan, there is her Grand Illusion quilt right there. Beautiful. Love it. Look at that sunshine. And kids in shorts. I am so ready for summer. I could just scream. Those are lovely. Thank you for tuning in today. And we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. Wow. Woohoo. Anna Braun says, yesterday's find, and that's with, with a little paper clip that there's something attached. That's what I want to see. She says, found this yesterday. Some of the fabrics are shattered, but it's so very pretty. Cost $18. Oh, my goodness. Look how fun this block is. I'll see if I can biggie size a bit of it here. So there's the quilt right there. Look how fun that is. Now, can you break that down in your eyes, and you just in your mind's eye? Could you dig into your browns and your creams and do something just like that, maybe with your Civil War prints? Now imagine it in batiks, bright. It would be gorgeous. What if we put it on point? Oh, that could be lovely too. Let's see what the block is itself. That is a very cool block. Look at that. See if you can break it down. See if you can figure out how to do something like this with your own scrap user system. Get out the graph paper and play. What I love about blocks like this is if I were to do it 
Uh, it's got on point sections, but if I used my inch and a half strips to start with the checkerboard in the center, and then the little parts that make the corners, if I started with inch and a half strips for those, those setting triangles uh, may be an odd, a little bit of an odd size. And then when you square the block, it's not going to finish on the even inch or the half inch because you've turned your normal sized patches on point. But that's so much better than starting with something, something 3 16 so that you can have a normal size when you put it regular. So don't let the size of the block scare you. Look at what size the units are and it may come together really easily. So I could see this one made with inch and a half strips and uh, figure out what those corners are. I, I love this. $18, are you kidding me? I would have fought you in the parking lot for that. That's beautiful. I love it. Those fabrics are very cool. So I'm guessing 1870 on those fabrics. Looks like there's some nice shirting plaids and stripes in there as well. Wonderful. That's, you know, I love to call those folders where you would fold it so that the best part's out and just display it somewhere because it makes you happy when you see it. That's the best thing. So Naomi says, box kite baby quilt from my scrap saver drawers. We'll make another queen size soon. Absolutely love the design. So this is her box kite from Addicted to Scraps. Isn't that fun? I love it as a baby quilt. It would be great as a queen size also. I, anything that makes a chain through the quilt I think is just very, very eye-catching. That's wonderfully patriotic. I love it. Okay, Susan Zerk says, birthday gift for nephew. There's a whole lot of giveaway quilts happening here. I love that. Just need to bind it. Leaving for Phoenix in 10 days. Getting away from Ohio and cold, wet weather. It says, stop, go, fast, slow, and vroom. So she has pieced around the center with patchwork letters. Isn't that cute for a grandson? I just love it. Wonderful. So the last time we had quilt cam, <clears throat> gotta start a new one here. I was trying to think when that was, that was before I went to Japan. So it's been about a month. And I spent my birthday in Japan which was very fun. For my birthday, I got to eat an octopus on a stick. <laughs> Things on sticks are a big deal there. But I would have to say that this was the nicest group of people that I have traveled with to date. We had, there was uh, 40 of us total, if you include me and our craft tours guide and our on the ground Japanese guide. So we had 37 travelers plus the three of us making the 40 that filled the bus. And it was wonderful. Chucky was our Japanese guide. She lives outside of Tokyo and she met us um, when we flew into Osaka and she, she stayed with us through the entire tour all the way till we reached Tokyo. And she was so kind and so knowledgeable and so gracious. I just love the Japanese people. And I, I would go back in a heartbeat Oops, that's the same fabric. And uh, if they, if the, uh, that's the same too. Nope, that's okay. All right. So if I, they asked me to go again, and I would have to say that my favorite part of Japan was number the bullet the bullet train ride from Kyoto to Tokyo was phenomenal. I always wanted to ride on the bullet train and you're going like 180 miles an hour and, and stuff is just flying by outside your window. It was very, very cool. Um, I, I think I loved Kyoto the best, the time that we spent there and we did little day trips out to different places. Tokyo is a huge, big city and I'm not a big, huge city girl. There were fascinating things there and the quilt show was there but I think I like the culture and being out a little bit and able to immerse yourself um, in the beautiful places more than being surrounded by big, tall concrete buildings and lots of traffic and, and, and big city hustle and bustle. So um, I, lo I loved it. I loved absolutely everything, but probably our favorite, my favorite time was the time that we spent in Kyoto. Now this, 
fall, we've got uh, Kenya coming up at the end of September into October. What a culture shock. What two totally polar opposite places can you choose between Japan and, and Kenya? So that's, that's going to be wonderful. Okay. And if the seams don't nest perfectly, I'm just okay with it but you know what they do pretty dang good they do pretty dang good and we're just going to grab another one and hopefully not have it the same thing looks good maybe better this side no i like it better that side okay i could make 16 patches till the cows come home machine I'm sewing on is a 1950s, we think it's around 1958-59, Atlas. Atlas was uh, manufactured by the Brother Sewing Machine Company in guess where? Japan. And it says down here on the pillar exclusively was it made for Atlas in Japan. So that was a big deal in the 50s and the 60s, the Japanese engineering. They really knew what they were doing with sewing machines and vacuums and cars and things like that. That's the same. <laughs> I need to do something to make it not the same. Okay, that'll work. Because this one is now done. So I can set it aside and pull in a new one. I think the, the hardest part about international travel is the flight itself. Because being on a plane for 14 hours is just, there, there's, I don't care if you have, do fly business class. We didn't. I was in coach in the back of the bus with everybody else. But 14 hours in a t metal tube in the sky is 14 hours in a metal tube in the sky. And it's impossible for me to sleep on a plane. So the, the time zone change. And the, the flight time was a little bit iffy, but we just loved it. We just loved it. So if you didn't have a chance to catch up with those, check back to January's blog posts. There's a number four going on. And uh, I posted some slideshows, some videos, some all kinds of stuff from that experience. going to have these 16 patches done in no time. One more. We'll take some more phone calls. So I'd love to know what's going on with you. As we've started a new year, have you started a new project? Are you working on UFOs? Have you Marie kondo your sewing area? I have not. I managed to, to uh, comb through my sock drawer <laughs> before going to Japan. I figured that's as much as I could do. And I, I cut down my sock drawer by half. I was amazed at how many socks I had. And why is it that I love, I love new socks? So here's a package of cute socks, and they come in a three-pack or a four-pack or a five-pack, and they're cute. So I buy them. But then you can't shut the drawer. So I am on a sock hiatus, self-imposed. I got rid of a bunch of socks. I'm using some of the socks for dusting furniture and some of the other socks went up to the cabin to live. But I would love to have time to go through everything. Have you watched Tidying Up on, on Netflix? It's precious. It's just, it's precious the way she helps folks. Okay, can you press this one? So here we go. Pretty cute? I think so. I think so. I think so. I think so. And we've got one, two, three, four, five. So I really only need five more of these. And then the 16 patches are done and I'll be on to the alternate blocks. Okay. I'm going to check in here. <laughs> okay. Jan Bristow is yelling at me. Yay, quilt cam, capital letters, exclamation points all the way across. So I have to pick up this one. Ooh, pretty. She says, I've adopted your awesome scrap user system and leaders and enders. And this is a leader ender project that is up on my wall. One and a half inch squares done leader ender style. 
became 64 patch blocks. So while I'm doing 16 patches, she's doing double that. She's got 16 patch, 16 patch, 16 patch, 16 patch into a 64 patch. And she says, this is going to be called Garden Gate, I think. Thanks for all you give to us. And she's from New Braunfels, Texas. Ooh, I love it. I love the purple and green setting. Look at that. So all of those squares came from her one and a half inch squares box. She made, I guess I would do it, four patches into 16 patches into um, 32 across by you know two blocks across and two blocks down so i think that's a lot of fun i think that's got possibilities let's biggie it up here and look at her fabric i like the neutral setting sashings remember if you put in sashings there's no seams to have to match other than where you are at the, at the cornerstone junction and it gives your eyes a place to rest sashings can be any width i have used sashings as narrow as um one inch cut so that it finishes half an inch wide it's just a sashing that is barely there but it gives those seam allowances a place to land so you have less matching of seams and a, and a flatter finish that's gorgeous i love seeing that on your design wall wonderful job and kennedy says getting slowly I broke my shoulder on Monday and I'm in a large splint. Oh no. But I had to do a seam yesterday. It made me happy from Australia. So she is, the, the picture is actually sideways. It's on her sewing machine bed, but she sewed two blocks together, even with a broken shoulder. So what's your excuse today? If she can sew one seam, can you sew one seam today? Absolutely. Best luck on that shoulder healing. Gwen says, my new toy, Treadle Time. I adopted Vera, named after the original owner on Big Game Sunday. This lovely number 66 is in beautiful shape, and I can't wait to use her. And she's from New Lenox, Illinois. Oh, she is pretty. Oh, she's pretty. So here's the Singer Model 66. You know why it's called a red eye? Because from far away, if you look at those decals on the top, You'll see a red one on either end of the Singer logo. It looks like the machine's staring back at you in certain directions, if you look at it just the right way. Some people think it's creepy. I think it's pretty. And her cabinet is, that is a beautiful cabinet. So here she is. Here she is in the cabinet. Isn't that wonderful? I love that folks are loving their treadle machines. It's just beautiful. Thank you for sharing and welcome home to Vera. That's wonderful. Okay, all the way to the top. Carol says, stitching with you. Happy Valentine's Day. So happy you are doing quilt cam tonight. I'm hand stitching a binding on a customer's quilt. Glad to have you while completing this tedious task. Did you finish Mrs. Maisel? Such a fun show. Now, Mrs. Maisel, I, I watched a few episodes that Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is on Amazon Prime. And I started watching it, oh gosh, maybe a year ago when there was only um, one season out. But I got waylaid with other things. It's one of those things that I know I'll enjoy, but the men folk in my family, not so much. If I could get them to watch it, maybe they would, but probably not so much. <laughs> Nobody gets blown up. No, nothing, there's no crime. Um, so while I was in Phoenix, my dad and I binged it and we got all the way through season one and season two with two episodes left. Now I watched the next to the last episode um, last week. And tonight when we're done with quilt cam, I'm gonna sit with my hand quilting in my lap and finish the last one. If you are an Amazon Prime user and you, you watch Amazon Prime, try the marvelous mrs measle um if if you are offended by a little bit of coarse language maybe you don't want to watch it um but i found it hysterical tony shalhoub uh, when he played monk i always thought he was so so funny he, i think he's even better in this role as the dad so really really fun show i love that one thanks carol it's glad to have you here 
Tarim says pineapple quilt. I was finally able to get winter to Winterset, Iowa a couple weeks ago to see your amazing pineapple quilt on the last day of the exhibit. We've had too many snow days. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thanks for your inspiration. Oh, this is wonderful. She's sharing a photo of my pineapple crazy from String Fling. Guess what just arrived home this week? So the show's done and my baby's back home and I get to pack up the trunk show to head to Texas on Tuesday with a bunch of new quilts coming into the mix for the trunk show, but several of the old favorites will also be going. And I think Pineapple Crazy is one that I, I love to travel with me because it really was made from trash. Those pineapple blocks are five inches. It's paper pieced. Those little slivers, they were maybe three fourths of an inch wide. It's so what they finish at like a fourth of an inch or less, you know, maybe, maybe a third of an inch. I'm not sure. But, um, I love paper piecing. I love using the scraps. I love using the fabric till a, within an inch of its life. So uh, that will continue. Thanks, Terry, for sharing that photo with me. I'm so glad you got a chance to go. I want to start another block because we only need five more. While I'm home here, the hubby is up at the cabin in Virginia. We have new windows going into Quiltville and we decided to bite the bullet now. And so we were gonna let the house um, be rented for a year. And then when there was a little bit of extra money beyond what the expenses were, put all of that towards the windows, maybe get a home equity loan, put that towards the windows. But we decided that the best time to do the windows is when nobody's living in the space. So that's happening. We are replacing 31 windows in the next few weeks. This was a, a rough, cold winter, so it really let us know what needs to be done to make the place comfortable for guests. We've replaced the fireplaces in the sewing quarters. There's two back-to-back -back fireplaces. It was the original chimney, and it was two rooms, but they opened up the sides. So now you've got two freestanding fireplaces in the middle. We put in new gas inserts. That was my birthday present. Um, you know, everybody else get something really fancy i get remote controls for for the fireplaces but my feeling was this with the old ones you had to get down on your hands and knees and turn this knob that was at the base of the gas logs and if you turned it the wrong way you turn off the pilot light and we couldn't have people doing that plus i don't want to have my guests on their hands and knees adjusting the heat up and down should they need it so there will be thermostats on the walls that you can set but also clickers flame up, flame down. Nobody needs to be on their knees for anything. Nobody needs to open up the grates that, um, or the, the, whatever you call that thing. I call it a, a grate, a screen, um, that will keep people from throwing fabric into the, into the flames and, and whatever. So that is up and running and I'm really excited about that. Um, roofing should happen in a, in a few weeks and all of the ceiling has been removed from inside of the post office. That's for the, for the roofing too, because of the leaks we've had. So it's been a whole lot of progress, but not pretty progress. It, it's really wonderful fun to buy furniture and throw a quilt on the bed and say, oh, isn't this pretty? But when you're dealing with stuff like electrical and fireplaces and drywall and whatever, it's, it's, new windows it's not really exciting but be excited because that makes us that much closer to doing this and whoops and i get it uh, sometimes the presser foot catches but i'm really excited we've um made plans for completely changed the plans for the lighting that i wanted to do we were going to do overhead spots with led lights in the ceiling I wanted better than that. I wanted it to light the whole space, not just look like spotlights over tables. We needed better light than that. The quilters need to be able to see to match their thread to their fabric, to match their fabrics to each other, to actually um, see what's going on across the room, not have certain places in darkness. So we are doing um, some LED panel lights in the ceiling of the, of the quilting quarters. 
and that's going to be just wonderful. They're they're on order. Again, you ha I have a box in my in my van for some that are going into the post office as well, and that's what led us to think that these were going to be great in the the quilting quarters at the inn as well. It's not exciting. These kind of light fixtures are not exciting, but the amount of light that they are going to enable, I want it to be crystal clear daylight in there. I want the light to energize folks. And because uh, when it's dark out there, it's really dark. There are no street lights. It's out in the middle of nowhere. So we need, we need good light. So that's, that's going to happen. Come on, match that seam. And I'm still on the lookout for more comfy chairs for bedroom reading nooks or for the the den where all of the hand stitching is going to be but we've got another year we've got one year my goal is to have it ready a, a year from april so that gives us 14 months to have it ready can we do it i hope so okay there's another one for the road isn't this fun this is really really fun Okay, we'll start another one. So right now, nope, that's the same. Yeah, it's more better. Okay. We also found out how expensive it is to heat the cabin with electricity. Everything was electric from the hot water heater to the stove in the kitchen to, and um, everything and we have had more power outages than we have had since we purchased us purchased it almost two years ago and though we have a generator it's noisy it's one of the little portable one you have to you know run it on a cord all the way out to whatever runs on gasoline and it only would work on certain outlets we decided that this is crazy we can't lease these propane tanks anymore just for the fireplace because uh, we have a gas stove in there. And checking around and checking around, checking around. This is really boring talk for Valentine's Day. Why am I talking about this? Because if you're leasing something, you're, you're flushing money away. So we purchased a 500-gallon propane tank that now looks like this this big blimp in, in the in the side yard of the cabin, but we own it. And that also made the propane gas much cheaper. We're not having to lease tanks. We're putting in a gas water heater and a gas stove so I can cook when the power goes out. It's all of these things that you need for extreme conditions and that's going to make living a lot better. So again, it's, it's not just exciting. It's not just a fun remodel. It's, it's what we need to do to be more efficient and prepared for when power outages and things happen. But I haven't had a gas stove since we moved from Texas. So this is going to be fun. This will really be fun. Okay. Everybody I know who has a gas cook range just loves it. All right. Let's check back in. <laughs> Jenna says, start a GoFundMe for renovations. You'd have it paid for in no time. I think there are a lot of people who need a GoFundMe um, more than I do. If I were to GoFundMe anything, I would I would do it for my my sister-in-law who is um, now undergoing chemo for for breast cancer. She's uh, had a double mastectomy, and this is the wife of my brother who passed away in September. So if there's there are so many other causes, we can do this as soon as we get the house open. It'll cover its own mortgage, and that's all I want is for it to just cover its own mortgage so that I can play with the ladies and, and have fun. Um, but but thanks for the idea. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. I don't think we need it, but it's still a wonderful thing. Scott Flanagan says, new lighting. Great to be watching you on Quilt Camp. Ooh, 
I just moved into my new studio and redid the lighting three weeks ago and did seven banks of LED lighting to brighten up the space. I am biggie sizing on these. Oh, these look awesome, Scott. So he's got, I have to zoom in on everything. Is I can see everything in your studio. This is awesome, Scott. So he just moved and he's put LED over his whole workspace. The LED lights are awesome. They don't flicker and you can get bright white ones and they don't have to re be replaced for like 45 years or something, something like that. And there are some that are quite decorative. They look really, really nice. In fact, I'm going to put them in the kitchen too. I love your space, Scott. That's great. I want to see what you're working on. I see that. It looks like a hovering hawk's block. <laughs> your machine. That's, don't you love seeing other people's spaces so i had a friend come over yesterday from raleigh her mother passed away and they had a bedroom set that they didn't have need of anymore since her her mother they were putting the house up for sale and it's just a sad situation things have to have to move on to to the next phase and she contacted me and said would you want this bedroom set and i took one look at it and said oh I do, I do, I do, I do. So she came over and brought, dropped it off with her husband. They fought the wind all the way to get to here. And this tall headboard is causing havoc with their drive down the interstate because it was really windy yesterday. But she wanted to see the sewing room. And, and I'm the same way. I love to see what, what's going on in other people's studios and how they store this and how they make good use of that space and and how things work ergonomically and whatever and her husband was with her so we're we're down here talking and i'm showing her this and that and then this is the long arm and this is where the computer is and this is what you see this is the other side of what you see with with quilt cam and he comes in and walks in the door and his eyes went like you know so uh texting back and forth texting back and forth I said, at least he knows that you could be worse, but you're not. <laughs> she said, he thinks I have all this stuff. Oh, honey, you ain't seen stuff. So it was kind of shock therapy to have them here yesterday so that he could see the stuff. Because in this room alone, I've got, well, there's a sewing machine behind the chair back here. The necky's back there. I will use that one to put on binding sometimes. Long arms over here to my left. I've got the atlas here, but I've got a treadle behind me over here, and there's two treadles over there on the wall. So just in this room, there are plenty of sewing machines. And I, he shut up pretty quickly. I don't think he'll give her any, any problem anymore now that, now that he's seen what's going on here. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting that furniture set up at the end. My plan is... We, you know, we've, we've moved it down to just 12 occupants now. It's just a better number. The, the arrangement of the tables in the sewing area works better with 12. Meals are easier to plan for 12. The bathroom situation is a lot easier, the shower situation, with, with 12. And that leaves um, bedroom number four. As let's say I have um, a quilting instructor who wants to host their own retreat at the inn. Well, the, the quilting instructor could have 12 students and also stay in bedroom number four by themselves as a, as a solo person. Um, if it's winter time and I can't make it up the cabin road for whatever reason, um, we, we have the availability to have that as office space, um, owner's storage closet, extra linens, supplies, things like that under lock and key when needed to be. So I'm excited about that, but that's where this bedroom set's gonna go. And all of that LED lighting in the sewing quarters. It's gonna be awesome, can't wait. Okay, Jenny Paul says, strobe waffle tea and good fortune. We are, we are floating away here in Moreno Valley, California. So much rain. Good day to stay inside, working on borders for mystery quilt. So happy to catch you live. Thanks for all you do and have a happy Valentine's Day. And that's from Jenny. And she knows exactly what to do with a strobe waffle. It's uh, very much a Dutch treat to take your little round waffle cookie. It's got like golden syrup in the middle. So when it warms up, it gets really gooey. And the waffle has kind of a cinnamon taste to it at least some that i've had but when you put it on top of your tea 
the steam from your tea makes the the syrup between the layers even more melty good and and then you eat it while it's warm so that's that's really wonderful and i love seeing the good fortune quilt behind that's terrific so for those of you who are watching that missed out on the good fortune mystery yes it has been retired it was retired on February 1st, so about two weeks ago now. I took all of the parts, there were what, seven or eight, eight parts, unscrambled them, rewrote them, kept all of the hints and tips and tricks in, and it's now available as a digital booklet in the Quiltville store on the digital patterns page. So it's not just a pattern, it's a whole booklet. It's about 22 pages. And uh, you can get that um, at will. I do run sales from time to time, so just be watching for those sales. And when the, that code pops up, you can get it at a discount price if you didn't participate during the mystery time. Now my brain's got to start working on what we're going to do for next year's mystery. Any ideas? We've got Kenya in October. We've also got Germany in December. But uh, chances are it won't be on Germany because I'll have to have the quilt already made in a couple posts pre-written and ready to go while we're on that trip. So we'll be setting things live while we're in Germany. Sherry Whalen says, yay, Quill Cam. Woohoo! She says, in snowy southeast Minnesota here, glad to see you on Quilt Cam. I bound and labeled Good Fortune last week. I used your colors, and when I took it to my quilt meeting today, everyone loved the striking color combos. Tonight, I'm binding a four-year-old UFO. Also, Hubs and I binged on Mrs. Maisel over the weekend. We both loved it. Oh, it was hysterical. It was just hysterical. And I'll keep myself from giving any spoilers, but this I thought the second season was that much better than the first. And uh, the, 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 especially the parts that took place in the summer. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. I love it. I love it. But here's her quilt. Her photo's kind of sideways in my email there. But beautiful job. Terrific finish. I'm looking forward to being in Minnesota in June. My mom turned 78. And she was born in Minneapolis. My dad was born in Minneapolis. She grew up in Richfield. And my aunt, her sister, lives in Maple Grove. So I'll be coming out for my mom's 78th birthday. She's coming from Idaho. Her cousins are coming from Florida and wherever. And we're doing this special big thing. Uh, for mom that that first week of June and then I'll stay and drive on down to Rochester for the quilt show and and teach there the next week so it's going to be a, a wonderful June to spend time with family and there's a reason why I only go to Minnesota in the summertime <laughs> because of what's been going on there this winter it's been horrible I have several Minnesota friends and I just I look at that winter and think oh heck no Heck no. I was born in January when it was 40 below. There's no going back to that. Mm -mm. But in the summer, it's wonderful. I love it. Okay, here's one more for the done pile. I think my iron turns off when I'm not using it because I'm too chatty. I was talking to a, a gal <laughs> whose husband was with her, and she said, she introduced me to her husband, and this is this is Bonnie Hunter, and he's, oh, the, the chatty one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least you guys respond when the cats don't. These are going so fast. Will this one go there? Da -da -da -da. Yep. As soon as these are done, I can start the strip sets for the alternate block. You just can't beat these machines. Just can't. Solid, sturdy, straight stitch only. See, there's that fabric. Anybody recognize that one? The one that's at the top? The second one down is a recycled piece. But that one at the top, there is a fabric line out that's current that has that exact same print. 
1982 or something. That just means I am definitely older than dirt when fabric that, that came through my adulthood is now being reproduced in my later adulthood. All right, now this one's done. And we didn't even run out of bobbin. Just cuteness, really, really easy. If you have lost your quilting mojo, just make 16 patches. Set them with sashing and a cornerstone. Put them on point. Use them as an alternate block for something else. Add star points around here. Use it as the center of a star block. There are so many different things that you can do with these. Okay, a couple of more. And then we're going to call this a night because I've got a date with Mrs. Maisel. Okay, beautiful Sherry, love that. Christmas serpentine web in progress. I'm slowly making progress, but love how it's coming out. Thank you for such a fun pattern in class. And this is from Kathy, who was in my class in Phoenix last week. Boy, is she going to town. Look at this. Do you see pinwheels? She has chosen specific color placements for the fabrics that she's using in her serpentine web. That is so very cool. I love it. I love it. We had a wonderful time in Phoenix, and I'll be going again um, next year. I just can't say no to that place. Wonderful shop. Wonderful. So Sarah Meyer says, what's next? It's a decision. Can't decide what's next. Changing up the fall quilt to a family tree. The white blocks are photos. Okay, so she's sharing her little EQ graphic there. So there's white squares in the center tree. And she's going to put family photos there. I think that's a great thing. Print them on fabric and just piece them right on in. I think that's a wonderful idea. And then she's got a play quilt that she's designed right there with some letters in it. Could be very scrappy, would be easy from planned yardage. She's got all kinds of things going on here. This one she's calling English Garden. There's some ideas for you if you're in the mood for a spring project. Pink blooming trees, y'all. There's pink blooming trees. I'm going to try to get some pictures when I'm out and about tomorrow and see if I can share those with you. I just love pink trees more than anything. Here's the same tree of life in an autumn or family tree in an autumn color scheme. So I think this is one of those things where they're all good projects. Just pick one. Just pick one and and dive in. You can't pick a wrong project. Just pick one and get started. I love the leaves in the, in the as cornerstones in that block. And of course, the little sawtooth stars are my favorite. I love those. Beautiful. Here's Mary C. who says lotto blocks with half square triangles. I'm ready for my next guild meeting on Monday if they don't cancel for snow. Lots of bonus half square triangles go along with these blocks. Thanks for a Valentine's quilt cam. And this is Mary Crowther in Walla 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 Walla. So she's got some more sawtooth type stars going on there. Complete with bonus triangle possibilities from that center square and a square. Wonderful. And one more. We're pushing nine o'clock already. Tina Tippin says, happy girl, no picture. <laughs> Just wanted to say it is so wonderful to see and hear you much lighter in heart. So good to see that happening for you. You're so sweet, Tina. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, this year, this is this is going to be a good year. Last year ended kind of rough. But, you know, time time wounds all heals. And uh, we, or heals all wounds. And uh, something I really firmly believe, three things. You cannot wish away grief. You can't. The only way to get past it is go through it, right? And it happens differently for everybody. So you cannot rush that. That being said, there are only two things in life that you really have control over. The first thing is your attitude. 
And just because you're grieving does not make you a sad person, right? Um, it's, it's just, it's, it's a temporary thing. You just have to go through it. You can't bury it alive. It has to happen. It's, it's part of the process. But your attitude can help you. So talk to yourself positively. Try not to swirl yourself down the drain. And that's what I, I've really tried to do. The second thing is the only thing that you have control over next, next to your attitude is your own effort. You can make the effort to make a choice, make a change, stay in the same place, or to swirl down the drain. So you, you, you have no control over anybody else's efforts or actions but your own. So those three things have, have been a, a great help for me through the, the fall and, the, and this winter. Um, that it's, it's okay to grieve. Grieving does not mean you are depressed but you have to go through it. Your attitude can help the whole process. So do talk to yourself positively and you can only control your own efforts and actions. And that's all. So we're taking this bull by the horns. In fact, we'll, we'll celebrate tomorrow with a physical at the doctor, <laughs> but we, we, it's got to take care of yourself. You got, you got to do it. So we'll, we'll do that. And then I am up to the cabin for the weekend. Hopefully they'll be done with installing the, the generator and everything. The power was off when I left on Tuesday. Power's back on, but they'll have to come back and turn the power off and get everything hooked up to the new tank. So the, the yard's a mess. There's mud everywhere, whatever. But um, I'm looking forward to one more weekend at um, in Virginia, and then I'm off to Texas on Tuesday. So when will we do another quilt cam? I'm thinking in March may be a little bit um, iffy. I've got three gigs happening in March, but we may squeeze it in um, in between things. So just be watching on the blog. Hopefully I'll have this project quite a ways along. There's another project I've been working on at the cabin um, was another addicted to scraps column block that I've been making with the bonus triangles from my Hunter's String Star. Love those bonus triangles. So I'll be sharing um, projects in progress over the next several weeks. I'll keep you informed of when Quilt Cam will be. If it's still early where you are, don't stop now. If you're still in the mood to sew, keep going. If you can do one seam today, only one seam, get, get it done. As for me, you're going to find me tucked into my comfy seat in the living room upstairs watching that last episode of season two of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Maybe you'll want to join me for that too. We'll catch you next time on Quilt Cam from the Basement. This is Bonnie Hunter signing off. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.